So uh, what are we uh, working with? We're working with the distribution of a compound sum. So we have in mind a random variable S, which is the sum over J, let's say, of XJs. And the, norm, norm, the number of terms in the sum is a random variable uh, N itself, right? And we want to think about yeah, what are different strategies to get grip on this distribution of the compound sum S. And you will see that there are uh, various strategies possible, which we will cover in this uh, chapter. And the first consideration that uh, we want to make at this point is that for certain combinations of choices, so think about the distribution of n, think about the distribution of xj and certain independence assumptions, you can get simple analytic results. Now, of course, the power of these analytic results is limited to uh, very few cases, right, which, which are relevant for our setting. But I do want to start here with uh, discussing one particular result, because we will need that result later on when we discuss the individual uh, risk model. Yeah? And that result goes as follows. So say that SJ is a compound Poisson distribution with a parameter, with a Poisson parameter lambda J, and with a severity distribution with a certain given CDF, right? And assume that you have n, small n, such compound Poisson random variables in total, and suppose that they are independent. So what we, uh, what, what we want to work with is what can you say then about the distribution of S? And S is in this case, the sum of those S1 up to Sn, so the sum of those compound Poisson distributions. Well, then it turns out that that is a compound Poisson distribution once again, but now with an adjusted parameter, lambda, which is the sum of the lambda one up to lambda n, and with a specific uh, severity distribution, which is given with the CDF that you see on the screen. So this theorem, it gives you a shortcut if you have to work with uh, the sum of independent conform, compound Poisson random variables, and it may seem a bit of a stylized result, but I, I think it's quite useful in our uh, loss modeling context because, of course, sometimes you have compound sums, uh, comp uh, compound Poisson sums, but for different types of claims or for different business lines, and you need to say something about uh, their, their, their sum altogether, right? And then this result comes in, uh, comes in handy. So what we want to do, uh, as, as, as always, is we want to think about how can we understand uh, this result. So um, let me start on the sheets with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to denote MG, MJT being the moment generating function that comes with the uh, severity distribution FJ, right? And that for each J running from 1 to N, say. So first of all, I can think about what is the moment generating function of the SJ, which is then the compound sum, where I'm working with uh, as the random terms in the sum, the NJ, with uh, Poisson parameter lambda J, and then with the CDF of the severity distribution, this FJ, right? And then I can say something about uh, how does this uh, moment generating function of this compound uh, sum random variable SJ, what it is, uh, what, what does it look like? And of course, the result that I'm using here is that we have some insight into or some understanding based on the previous class. We have some understanding of what this moment generating function of a compound sum random variable is when the number of terms in the sum is Poisson distributed with a parameter lambda j. So this expression, this is something we recognize from what we learned last week. And this is the moment generating function for a single building block as j. Uh, and now we want to take all these as j together in a random variable s and think about what will be the distribution of this s. And once again, I'm going to go via the moment generating function because I've if I'm able to recognize this moment generating function of random variable S, then due to the one-to-one -one correspondence with the distribution of S, I'm immediately sure uh, I can recognize then uh, as well the distribution that this S should follow, right? 
So what I'm going to do here, and I'm not writing it on the iPad because these are steps that we've been uh, going through a couple of times by now. So if you look at the moment generating function of S evaluated in T, you're looking at this guy. We made an assumption of um, independence among the compound Poisson random variables as one up to Sn. So we can write the expected value of the product uh, of the terms that you see over here. We can write that as a product of expected values. So product of moment generating functions. Each of those moment generating functions, we know what it should look like because each Sj is a compound Poisson random variable with Poisson parameter lambda j and with a severity distribution that has as its moment generating function this mj evaluated in t, right? Now I can manipulate this expression. I'll bring the product inside the exponential function. I'm going to work with the sum of the lambda j's, which I will denote with lambda. And I will isolate or I will put this lambda in front. And the reason that I do it like that is because now I can recognize here again the same structure as the structure of this moment generating function for a compound Poisson random variable. And what I see here is that as the Poisson parameter, we're now using this lambda. And as the moment generating function um, of the severity distribution uh, in this uh, compound Poisson construction, we're going to use uh, the thing that you see here in blue. So the sum over j of lambda j divided by lambda multiplied with the moment generating function and j evaluated in t. So the final question that uh, we need to solve is, can we recognize this moment generating function, which you see here between the square brackets? Can we recognize this one as the moment generating function that corresponds to some CDF that, uh, that we know or that we are aware of, right? So that's the last part of, uh, that's the last part that I should answer in proving this, this theory. So if we continue like, um, like that on the next sheet. So what I want to do is I want to indeed recognize this moment generating function over here as the moment generating function that corresponds to a CDF, which is the sum of lambda j divided by lambda times uh, the CDF FJ evaluated in, in X, yeah? And the way how I can do that, and I'm writing it down explicitly on the sheet, is that I start from my given expression over here. I know that MJ evaluated in T is the moment generating function of my random variable XJ. I know that if I look at this expected value, then by definition of the expected value and by using the fact that xj is a continuous random variable. I can write it with an integral expression. I have a sum of certain integrals, so I can flip the uh, integral sign and, and sum construction. So I recognize something over here. And there, of course, I'm now working with a PDF, which is the sum over j of lambda j divided by lambda times the PDF of xj. And that, of course, is the PDF that corresponds to the CDF which is mentioned in uh, the statement of the theorem, yeah? So what have we been doing? We've been looking at compound Poisson random variables. We took n of such compound Poisson random variables, called them S1 up to Sn, assumed independence among them, summed them together, and under certain assumptions, and we can then show that you're once again dealing with a compound Poisson uh, random variable. 